I don't know whether to laugh or just be quiet. <laughs>
when you came in. It has a little information about our church and what we do. We do the Bible and the scriptures for everything we do in the Bible. Speaking in tongues, walking, leaping, praising God. It's all the Word, and that's what we do, the Word. Um, if the ushers, he's here tonight. we got a new usher there, Mr. Chuck. Look sharp, Mr. Chuck. New word. Usher. You look sharp. He's an old guy, okay. I'll correct that. Um, if you need an offering envelope, please raise your hand. He'll be glad to help you. Um, we do have Word of Power Bible School starts this Wednesday. Okay? It's power of, of uh, prayer, right? Yes. Power of prayer. Pastor Sherry is teaching that class. Awesome. I know it's going to be awesome. Yes. Um, has anyone gone to the school before? I'm a graduate. Anybody? Anybody? Amen. It's a good. It's a good thing. Awesome. If you want to learn the word, it's awesome. Also, um, we have Easter coming up soon and our kids we uh, always do an Easter hunt every Easter um, we put candy and eggs we've had as many as 600 and some eggs right yeah. yeah so please if you do donate candy wrap candy that can fit in an Easter egg okay that would be very helpful okay I'm doing offering too so let's get going here so Pastor James has plenty of time to preach the word all right oh yeah on Sunday set the clock ahead yeah that's gonna be Saturday night, it's your Sunday, yeah, yeah, sorry about that, okay, uh, the last couple of weeks I've been doing the offering, and I'm doing it, God, what does God want you, he wants you to prosper, right, he's for you, he's not against you, right, because if God was going to get you, it'd be done, you might as well stay bad, it's over, okay, that's my brief synopsis on that, and trust me, the world believes God's out to get them, I laugh every day because it's hysterical how they think God's out to get them. I don't, I don't know how they're out going to beat God because nobody's going to out beat God. Um, 2 Peter, I'm reading from today, and it's uh, verse 3. 2 and 3? Yeah. Um, it's about all things pertaining to life and godliness. According to his divine power, he has given to us all things to pertain to life and godliness. That's 2 Peter 1 and 3. Then the Amplified says, For his divine power was bestowed upon all things that we are suited to life and godliness. Okay? He's, he's got a plan for us, you know? We just need to know what the plan is, you know? People are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. The knowledge you know is what's going to help you. What you don't know, Satan's going to take you at lunch and be sad. Okay? Um, there's one other verse there that I like, too, and that's the next verse. It says... For the world, you know, for the, this is the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world, okay? God gives you a way out of that too, okay? The Amplified says, by means thereof, referring to those promises, he has bestowed upon us his precious, exceedingly great promises that through them you may escape the flight from the moral decay, rottenness, corruption that is in the world because of covetousness. Think about it. Everybody likes everybody else's stuff. They want what they have. They want what you have. I see it all the time, and it's really sad. You should be happy for what you have, for what you look like, for what you're doing. You know, People forget that. Be an individual. God created us all different. Okay, Be an individual. You should be different. He wants you to be different. Because you could reach that person I can't reach. That's why you're different, you know? Um, and uh, he has become sharers, partakers of his divine nature. He wants us to be a share, you know, of his divine nature. He has a plan for us. We just need to read the plan, okay? He wants the best for us. He wants to help us. If anything you get out of this, he's for you, not against you, okay? He wants you rich. He wants you wealthy to help others, not to have a big old house and everybody look at you. To help people, okay? That's the basic of all this thing. Okay. Enough on that. Dear Heavenly Father, we're going to pray. Has everybody got an offering envelope? And please, when you when I get done, please, Chuck, if you could bring your offering envelopes up, that would be great. You wish above all things that we prosper and be in health, not sick, but be in health as our soul prospers. And we thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for those who give tonight, Father, bless it a hundredfold in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
me to move up a little closer, please? For Mr. Family Love. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're the Family Love Machine. church all the time and nobody knows about it. I know about it. I find yeah. out. But he comes down here way before services a lot of times and does stuff. And he doesn't want anybody to find out because he's not looking for credit. Amen. And that's a true heart for God. Amen. And one of the reasons I really love Pastor James is he's not just words. He's actions. Amen. And so I appreciate him, and he, he also has got, he's good with the word, he's a good word man, amen, and I love the word, he loves the word, and we love the word. Amen. So Pastor James, come on and take your liberty, okay? Yeah. tonight around you, around your word. Father, we thank you for it tonight. And we thank you for the spirit whom you sent to indwell us, Father. The one who makes it alive to us, quickens it, makes it real, opens our understanding to it. Shows us how it applies to our life and how to put it into practice. Shows us how to live it out, Lord, so that we can walk in victory in this life yeah. and be prepared for the life to come. Yeah. And Father, we thank you tonight. As we gather together, we trust the Holy Spirit for utterance tonight and for expression and to bring things to our remembrance and to bring things that maybe we've not thought about but need to be said. Lord, everything that's said and done tonight, we look to him for his help. <laughs> and we thank you, Lord, he's going to help us tonight. And I thank you, Father, and I give all the glory to our Lord Jesus, Father, for I ask that your Spirit do these things in Jesus' name. I thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the deer pass for the water, so my soul longs after you. Why does the deer pant for the water? Well, why is he thirsty? Well, Uh, that it, well, it does, just because he didn't have water, don't mean he, you know, he wouldn't, he'd be thirsty. You go quite often without water, right? What do deer do? They run. So the deer's panting for the water. He's got to be running if he's panting. Going through his life, whatever he's running to or whatever he's running from, the deer's panting for the water brook. So he can satisfy and refresh his soul. Right? right? right. Yeah. Well, the Holy Spirit is the water. Yeah. Yeah. So our hearts need to pant for him. Need to pant for the word of God. Yeah. Because as the deer pants for the water, David said, my soul pants for you. Yeah. <laughs> my soul pants. I'm thirsty. I've been running. I've been going through daily life. Been dealing with things. 
I'm panting and I'm thirsty. Yeah. I need a drink, God. Yeah. Now I need it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Glory to God. Glory. Well, we're going to just see how this goes because um, I had a scripture turn around in my heart and it was really just a phrase. And Pastor Steve asked me to preach. I'm like, well, okay. So praise the Lord. So who's got faith here tonight? Amen. Who's going to use it? <laughs> now listen, if you, if you need answers, now is a good time to get them. Yeah. Yeah. Now there's no more better time for you to use your faith to hear from God than right now. Right. Come on. Come on. Come on. I mean, I've, got, I've got things written down here, but some of it may not apply. Come on. Come on. But we are going to go to that passage of Scripture. Because yeah. some things do apply, and there are some things the Lord wants us to get a hold of for the times in which we live. Yes. Yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And if you will turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. And I'm going to do the best I can to yield to the Holy Ghost and, and, and to give you what He's saying because. I, I need to hear from him myself. Yes. Amen. We all need to hear from him. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, sometimes I've been known to be a little scholastic. I don't want to really try to be like that tonight, but there is some foundation that needs laid. Yeah. And I'm not going to say a little scholastic and I'm going to go through all that real hot and heavy uh, or slow and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but we're jumping on the ship we're getting in the boat with the Lord and we're going to the other side yeah. right it doesn't matter what's between here and there he's going to get us there and we're getting in the boat with him we're going to the other side yeah. praise the Lord he's already working yeah. he's already moving yeah. already glory to God holy ghost man he's fun he's a cool person Never loses yeah. his cool. Yeah. Always in control. That's right. Never stressed. Right. You know, I, I just I want to say this because, you know, when we were singing as the deer pants, and, you know, we was at the end of the song, and I'm just kind of like resting in the peace, just kind of hanging out there in the presence of God. Like, ah. yeah, that's where we're to live yeah. all the time. Amen. We are to live there. Not just get there when we can not just get in there in the praise service. We're to live and walk there. That's right. That's right. We're to abide there. Because yeah. right. if, if you're abiding in him, you're going to abide in his peace. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And the world needs peace. Oh, yes. And they look, look at you and they see a big smile come across your face and you and you just like and they say, What are you smiling about? Amen. I don't know, I'm just happy. It's just coming up. Yeah. What? Yeah, oh yeah, let me tell you about it. <laughs> you know, you can think yourself happy. Yeah. Yes. I mean, just thinking good thoughts. Yeah. Thinking thoughts of victory. Yeah. You can think yourself happy. The Apostle Paul said that. Yeah. He said, we're a pound old king of good pump. I think myself happy. Yeah. But I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. <laughs> <laughs> no matter what he went through, the prophecy Jesus gave is coming to pass even before kings yep. and the rulers of the day. He said, I'll make myself happy. I was not disobedient. <laughs> to the heavenly vision. Paul saw the vision. It was a vision that the Lord gave him. It wasn't something that he thought up. Right. It was something that was revealed to him yeah. and showed him. Right. And he had to flesh out right. and go through some stuff. Yeah. But he says, I'm glad I wasn't disobedient. Amen. I think myself happy old King Agrippa. Amen. I wonder how he said Agrippa. 
changes me a little bit and you know and I know it's him because he ain't getting grieved over it so praise the Lord Yes. Joy refresh you. Yes. 
You'll make you downright happy. Amen. You're upright happy. <laughs> you gave me down when you're going up. <laughs> Some people say, get down. I say, no, get up. <laughs> a little bit higher. <laughs> Because ain't no high like the most high. And we ain't got as high as we're going yet. But someday, soon the trumpet's going to blow. And he's going to say, come up hither, and we're going to go high. Amen. That day is drawing near, and he's coming soon. Yes, he's coming soon. going to split the eastern sky. And we're going to say bye-bye. And we're going to go to the marriage. Of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what are we doing tonight? This is part and parcel of making ready for His coming. Because He is coming soon. And very soon. He's coming. So we need to be making ready for His coming. Has anybody been here? The Spirit of God say that He's coming soon. Anybody been saying, you need to get ready? Yeah, yeah. Get ready. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean? Yeah. Now, if your father says, go get your brother and it's time to come home. Yeah. What well, does it matter? What do we care? We're out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Because that's what we're looking for anyway. We're doing more than occupying until he comes. We're possessing, yeah. overcoming, yeah. Yeah. living, and bringing more with us. Yeah. That's where our goal is. Yeah. To get as many home as we can. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. But if he says, go get them tonight, and we're out of here, we don't care. That's right. That's right. Come on. We're gone. Come on. Yes. And what's going to happen on the world scene is going to happen. Yeah. That's right. But it ain't going to happen when I'm here. Right. But some things are already, you're seeing the sproutlings of them. Yes. The first fruits of the hell that's coming on the earth when the church leaves. But we don't need to be afraid. That's right. Come on. But we pray. Praise the Lord. And there's a, over here in Matthew chapter 25, there's a, a parable Jesus taught, and it contains two virgins. The virgins are the bridesmaids, the attendants to the bride. But Jesus put this in here for a reason. Because there are some things that we need to be aware of and we need to look at for our own lives in making ready for His coming. Because that was their whole purpose. To watch for the bridegroom for the hour that He would come. We're to be alert and vigilant, yeah. looking yeah. upward, yeah. looking for His coming. Yeah. And we need to make ready for His coming. Yeah. That's right. If we're not ready, we need to get ready. Come on. Come on. Now, getting ready don't happen all in one night. That's right. Amen. Unless you got one thing you need to take care of, it's covered tonight. You might be ahead of me. But, this has been going around this phrase, making ready for his coming. Amen. So over here in Matthew 25, it says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven, over in Matthew 24, you know, it's the end time chapter. Yeah. That Jesus talks about different things happening in the end times. Well, this is continuing the thought. Yes. In the end times, in the last days, when he's getting ready to come. It says, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bride. They took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While I grew Terry, they, were, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. <clears throat> then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. 
And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. And everything be ruined, if you look it up in something else. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came the other virgins, all saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. In verse 1 it says, The kingdom of heaven is like unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. The lamp in Proverbs 20, 27 says that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Your lamp, the inward part, is the part on the inside where there are inner private chambers. And one of those chambers is the Holy of Holies. The innermost portion of man's spirit where God abides and dwells. In there, it's the belly is also likened to a, a hollow place. A place where that must be filled with the word of God and the spirit of God. There's no more room in the end. Do you know what I mean by there's no more room in the end? When the devil went out of somebody who was possessed, he come back thirsty and dry looking for a place to fill back up. He says, I'm going to go back to my house. Well, so many times people have gotten born again, but they never got the word in. They never got the mind renewed. They never got filled with the spirit. They didn't really continue with God. And the devil came back and oppressed them. He didn't possess them, but he oppressed them. And, and, and their lives were seemed like it was just a big mess. But no, that place has got to be filled with the Word of God and the Spirit of God so there is no more room in the end. The end is full of the Word of God. The end is full of the Spirit of God. Amen. 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 The Spirit of man is also likened to a womb where a womb is where something is generated to produce something or cause something to be produced or bring something into existence it is the place where the things of God are conceived and birthed it's your spirit where you conceive from God it's your spirit where vision is birthed and things come forth and you participate and cooperate with God to bring forth the vision of God, the plans of God, the purposes of God, to pray out the mysteries of God. The spirit of man is also likened into a bosom. In other words, it is a, chest, a person's chest, listen closely, it, it is a person's chest when it is thought of as the place where secret thoughts and feelings are kept. It is from here the mysteries of God are prayed out and secrets are revealed. It is here we find God's thoughts and how he feels about things. God will share things with you sometimes if he can trust you with those things. There are some things I remember Brother Hagin saying that he's never got to share. There were secret things. They wouldn't let him share. But he knew about them. But he prayed. And the secret thing belongs to the Lord, but what's revealed belongs to us and our children forever. Yes. Amen. Amen. Verse 2 says, And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. The wise were thought to be, or are said to be, discreet in applying cautious character. Those ten virgins, five of them were wise. They, they stayed alert. They watched their actions. They made sure they had provision. They made sure they had more than enough for the time to come. They didn't know when the bridegroom was coming, but they wanted to make sure they had enough oil on their lamp so when they come, they could trim the lamp and be ready for him to go and 
and to, to bring him to the bride, and the bride could go with him into his home. Amen. You know, over in, in the Old Testament with Isaac, or Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I don't remember, it might have been Isaac, where he sent his servant out. And he was decked with all kinds of jewels and lots of money and stuff to give the father of who was going to be the bride, Isaac's bride. It was Abraham's servant that went out. And that was likened to the spirit who goes out and looks for a bride for Christ. Yes. Well, the ten virgins are like the Holy Spirit too. They're looking for the bridegroom to come. Yes. Right now. Yes. This day. This time. This hour. Yes. The Spirit of God is, we just said, how many are hearing the Spirit of God say, you need to make ready for His coming. You need to be getting ready. He's coming right. too. Yes. Yeah. Well, He is like those ten virgins. He knows He's coming. And he knows it's soon. And he will prepare us and have us ready when he splits the sky and calls us up high. Yes. yes. Glory to Amen. God. Amen. But we don't want to be foolish. Amen. We don't want to be dull. Amen. Careless. Stupid headed. <laughs> we don't want to not pay careful attention. But when the Spirit of God is speaking to us. Amen. We need to, he says, incline your ear yes. to my words. Right. That's the written word and the things the Spirit of God is saying to you. Incline. Hearken. Listen to what I'm saying. The foolish, they just go on about their way. They don't really pay it too much to mind. They don't make proper preparations. But there's a temptation here. Verse 3. It says, They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Verse 5, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. This happened to the wise virgins and also happened to the foolish virgins. You know, as, as time began to linger, there's often sometimes a temptation to think that well, he's not coming now or maybe he is going to be a while yet. And so people begin to get caught up in the things of the world. Right. Come on. Over here in uh, Matthew. Four, or not Matthew, Mark, I'm sorry. Mark 4, over in 17, it says, and this is the parable of the soul. It says, and having no root in themselves, verse 17, and endure for a time. They receive the word. They hear the word. Yeah. They hear God talking to them. I mean, they come to church. They, they go to meetings. They hear God occasionally. But it says they have no root in themselves. And so endure for a time. Afterward, when affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended or they fall right. away from it. Right. Right. They let it go. They go back to the mold of the, what? Right. the world. The mold they were used to. Yeah, that's right. Verse 18. And these all and these are they which are sown in thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in, choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. Amen. That is a fool. That would be a foolish virgin to forsake what was told them. Two things are, are going on here in when they slumber and slept. The two stages of falling away. We're not of those that fall away. That's right. But we're yeah. going to endure and continue yeah. and be steadfast in the faith until the time he comes again. Amen. We will hold fast to the Word of God. Amen. The two stages here. First, uh, this is from J.F.B. Uh, 
uh, commentary. I thought this was good, so I wrote it down. Actually, I copied and pasted it. First, that, <clears throat> first, that half involuntary lethargy of drowsiness, which is apt to steal over yeah. one who falls into inactivity. They stop being busy about the things of God. Now, I'm not talking about being so busy with the things of God that you don't have time to spend time with God because you're too busy and that's and you got your priorities out of order. But they were active in seeking God. They were active in fellowship with other believers. They were active in serving in the church. They were active doing the things in their daily life the Spirit of God was telling them to do. They weren't dismissing it Come on. as right. their own thoughts. Come on. Right. Come on. But they kept themselves sharp and clean so that they could di differentiate between their own thoughts and his thoughts. Yes. But when they begin to backslide, they, they, they stop doing those things. And they start paying attention to the things we just read about in the sower, the things of this world. Something happened in their life that distracted their attention off the master onto this life. Everybody has things they need in life. Jesus knew that. But he says, you worry about these things because you don't know who you are. That's right. Come on. You don't know your value. That's right. You don't know how much you're worth to me. And we think about, he died for us, but I really don't think we've really got a grab hold of it yet, like, like he really wants us to have. At least I don't think I do. You know? Because he says, you don't know your value. You don't know how much you're worth to me. I mean, I would not give Skyward to die for anybody in here. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be honest right now. Right? I don't think you give anyone I don't blame you. Here. I mean, if you could come to that place and actually do it, <laughs> then maybe you'd be more like God than me. You might already be, I don't know. But that's not what we're here for, right? We're here to make ready for his coming because we all got things we need to get ready and change and adjust and so on. But the Holy Ghost knows what those are, and he said he's coming soon, so we're, we're making ready. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. And then there's the conscious, deliberate yielding to the slum. The conscious, deliberate yielding to those things of everyday life that draw you away from God. See, it's one thing when you, you start to get drowsy, you, you see things creeping in, trying to take you away, and you make it just, you recognize it. Yeah. And you, you, you make the change. And you, you keep the proper priority, the proper priority. That's Jesus, you know, number one. Spending time with God, being in the Word. Yes. Doing the things the Word tells you to do. Amen. Then there's the, you see it happening, and I'll get to it later. Yeah. I'm busy, Lord. I'll, I'll get to you later. Yeah. That's what you're telling me. That's what yeah. we, we've all probably told him at one time or another. Maybe in one degree or another. Maybe not to the point where we backslid, but... I've been in that state of backsliddenness before. But there's one thing I can say this. I always, thank God, always, for whatever the reason, thought about God. And always talked to Him, or tried to, even though I was backslidden. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I mean, I had an experience with God when I was 10 years old that it just stuck with me. And I haven't had no cheerleaders. I hadn't had nobody coaching me along right. the way of my walk with the Lord, Come on. ever. Come on. I've been the leader. Come on. And whoever led me was God. Amen. Now, there's others who prayed for me. Yes. My mother prayed for me. Yes. My pastors prayed for me when I was growing up. You know, and I know people pray for me now. But the point was this. <clears throat> I didn't forget God. That's right. Amen. I didn't know what I was doing. I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I didn't really know how to fix it. And then things got really hellish in my life and in my mind where I had no choice but to cry out to God. Yeah, that's right. And it was either I changed or I paid the price. And I was told that very distinctly and very clearly by the Holy Spirit standing at 
my car working on it at my dad's house back in 1987. Very clear. I never forgot it. He says, you need to change. This is perfect. You need to change or uh, you will pay the price. And it wasn't he was going to make me pay. My ways were going to lead me into destruction. And I was going to miss it somewhere. And I was going to end up paying the price. And that stopped me cold in my tracks. I said, God, I can't pay the price. I can't pay the price. The price I already paid, and I don't have to pay the price. I need help. And it continues today. But we're in a better place now than we were then. Because he's good and merciful. Praise the Lord. All right, and it goes on, it says here, before I got off on the rest of it, I'll finish reading it. And then there's a conscious, deliberate yielding to it after a little vain resistance. You know, I just, I know I shouldn't, but I'll get to it later, kind of thing. Such the state alike of the wise and the foolish virgin, even till the cry of the bridegroom's approach. There are people who've been in the faith. There are people who are not in the faith. No, something's going on. But there are people who have walked with God, they're out of fellowship with God right now, who hear him saying, get ready, and are dismissing it. Oh, yeah. 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 By the droves. Right. Now, I don't know how many people I have talked to that they, 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 they say they know the Lord. I say they knew the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. If he don't say he knows you, you don't know him. You're deceived. That's good. That's a good word. Yeah. You examine yourself, the Bible says, to see if you're in the faith. Yeah. That's right. Not just if you prayed a prayer one time and right. mended it, but what do you mean now? Right. Right. now? What do you mean right now in your walk right. with God? That's right. Where's your heart now? So, it's not what we've done, it's where we're at. And you, you, you say to yourself, well, if I died right now, or if he came right now, whatever I'm doing or I'm involved in, how would this? How would I feel about it standing in front of him and he's examining me? And he's looking right through me just like I'm looking through the atmosphere. Amen. And he sees it all. Can I stand in front of you, Jesus, with a clean and a clear conscience? With confidence, knowing I obeyed you and did what you said. Yeah. Amen. That's where I'm striving to be. Yeah. Because I haven't always got there. I haven't always been there. I ain't saying I've ever got fully there. Yeah, come on. But I have walked, and you can walk with a clean and a clear conscience before yes. God, knowing that you're doing everything He said. Yeah. And we're not talking about works, it's just walking, walking right. Yeah. Yeah. Becoming like Him. Yeah. Yes. Putting things off. That you don't need to have on you. Yeah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, what do you do if you're asleep? Paul told him this over in uh, Romans 13. It says, Love works no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the, fulfill the fulfilling of the law. And knowing that, or that knowing, the time that now it is high time to sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, you know if you're walking honestly or not, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Amplified says in 13, it says, Let us live and conduct ourselves honorably and becomingly as in the open light of day, not in uh, reveling or carousing and drunkenness, not in immorality and debauchery, sensuality and licentiousness, not in quarreling and jealousy, 
But clothe yourselves, verse 14, Lord with the Jesus Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the Messiah, Messiah, and make no provision for indulging the flesh. Put a stop to thinking about the evil cravings of your physical nature to gratify his desires. These are things that will take us away from Christ if we follow them. He says, wake up. Yeah. That's another message. Yeah. That's the Lord. How do you wake up? Well, we don't have time to do it today. Yeah. Well, we're going to wake up. Leave help us wake up. Yeah. All right. Behold, the bridegroom comes. So, you might just have to stop there. That's good. Amen. We talk about making ready yes. for his coming. Yes. Making ready for his coming. Amen. Did you receive it? Yes, sir. So, what are we talk about? We don't want to be fools, right? That's right. We want to be wise. We want yes. to be alert. Yes. Prepared. We're talking more about the foolish and the wise next week when we get down to verse 8. Okay. That's good. That's good. Anyway, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the word. And I thank you, Lord, for sending the Holy Spirit to help us. Now, I sure needed his help, and he sure did come through once again. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for being faithful. And thank you, Father, for the word that we received tonight and that which the Spirit of God did within us. Father, we trust him to seal that up in our hearts and minds tonight. And we apply the blood of Jesus over that. And we thank you, Father God, that these words will grow in our hearts. They'll minister to us, Lord. And thank you for strengthening us tonight by your spirit, giving us joy and refreshing. And Father, thank you for the life-giving word that you gave us too, to nourish our spirits, Lord. Something to chew on in days to come to carry us through till we feed on it again. And we thank you, Father, for it. And give all the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You still want me to do that? Yeah, a little bit. It is 840. Well, we're going to. Oh, tell me about Let's just pray. And we're going to pray in tongues a little bit. Um, for those who perhaps need this and are not here, or maybe they're not even coming, maybe they're out there and they're backslid, or maybe they're even lost. But they know something's going on. Yes. And they're getting ready for his coming. And we want the Spirit of God to continue. And he will continue as long as we give him place. Yes. Yes. He will continue to move and work in our services. Yes. And we don't grieve him, but yield to him, respect him, and honor him. Give him that proper respect. He will continue to move. Yes. So we're going to pray, and then we'll just pray in tongues. And then when you feel released from the Lord, you, you can go. Father, we just thank you right now that the things we just said, we're asking for others to complete that which we don't know needs completed or needs done. And so Lord, we just thank you right now for others and the Holy Ghost to solidify this message, 
in our hearts and those people out there that you are dealing with, Lord, that we come in contact with every day. Or maybe they don't even know they're passing by and you, the angels are out there drawing them. Tell them, hey, you need to stop in here yeah. when service yeah. is. Come back here when the service is. Yeah. You'll get some answers. You'll get answers that you need. Yeah. And that which is in your heart that you're wanting to know about will be answered. And continue to draw them, Father, by your Spirit so that they, and make the way clear for them so that they can come in and, and you know, they can respond to the Holy Spirit yeah. and, right, yeah. and rightly. And so, Father, all the rest of it we need utterance for, we just thank you right now in Jesus' name. Oh, <laughs> Oh, Rebecca, don't let me go. 
your solar system and yes I created everything within it is anything too hard for me to do is anything too hard I put boundaries on the ocean I put the sun the moon the stars around your planet I named every star is anything too hard for me to do? The more I am expanded, says the Lord, in your mind, the greater is your faith. How do you see me? Do not make me too small. Make me larger yet, says the Lord. Andrew, 
says anybody that's selling all this food and stuff to store up why would God say you know have oil in your lamps because I'm going to get you right away he didn't say I'm coming for you to store up food no and all these these ministries that are saying buy oh, your food now they're in, not in faith that's right. they don't have enough oil in their lamp to discern that what God is saying and what he said is for us that seek his face Yes. And so all these things that are going around about selling all this stuff, it's either it's either con or it's, or ignorance, because we're to be filled, and if we're filled, those five virgins that are filled, God's coming right back to take us, yes. and the other ones, you know, they're not going to. It wouldn't matter if they had enough food for a century. So you see that? Yes. So be careful not to be taken in by that. You're going to store up the food, dude. Amen? Yeah, amen. God takes care of us. And yes. He's going to take care yes. of us forever. Yes. Praise God. Did you get a good word yes. tonight? Man, I got a good word, Pastor yes. James. Thank you, sir. Yes. The Holy Ghost. Yes. Amen. Well, love you guys. Thank you for praying. And if there's anything you need, Pastor James will be up here. And... Pastor Missy will be up here to minister to you, okay? Love you guys. Oh.